Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm uh, I'm kind of uh, using a new setup here just just for this particular thing. So I'm trying trying to record on my computer. So that's where, and I'm sitting a couple feet away from it. So I will uh, hopefully everything goes well like this. I did it because I have my camera up above me uh, on my workbench and. I am ready to start the City Classic service station build, so I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to do it in several parts. Uh, just so you know, uh, here's the two plastic sprues, which is most most of the kit is right here. Uh, some of these things I'm not going to use, however. I bought some detail parts. I bought these from uh, JL. So here's some garage detail parts that I'm going to paint up and put in the service station. Uh, I bought some more modern gas pumps. Of course, you know I'm modeling the 70s. And the gas pumps that come with this, there's two different styles, are more the uh, older style. Yeah. And uh, by the 70s, most places, not all of them, but most of them had uh, the uh, squarer looking pumps. And you can see here that I ordered these from Cat's Paw, a company called Cat's Paw online and these are uh, 3d printed uh, gas pumps and here is the uh, here is the pump handle down here attached to it and that way you can use a uh, a wire or something like that to have the hose in whatever position you want to have it as well as the gas pump uh, the other things I bought uh, this did this does have an ice maker and it does have a coke machine uh, I, I bought a little more uh, modern coke machines this is more of a, a 40s 50s style coke coca-cola machine so I bought uh, I bought these on online uh, got uh, I actually got six of them so I can decide which ones I want to use but you see here's a coke uh, the 10 cent dispenser, which I remember those mainly in the 60s, uh, but um, it could it could have been in a gas station like this up in the 70s. And then I've got a Dr. Pepper and a 7-Up machine here too. I don't know how well you can see those. Oops. Uh, I, th I think they're pretty, pretty nice looking um, little dispensers here. And they look like they have, they're printed on the front. So it looks more like a machine instead of having to paint it. Uh, same here with these uh, in here. So I'm going to have uh, a couple uh, Coke machines out front and I thought that would look, uh, I thought these looked pretty nice when I saw them on eBay. A uh, couple other things I did. Here's uh, here's the, uh, the sheet for you do an interior and a floor However, I think I'm going to do a, uh, a better floor than just a cardboard print. I might use some of these gas signs like the 54 and the 57 cent one. That should be right about the correct era. And then um, something else I bought was a, a different decal sheet. This comes with a decal sheet. If I can find it, of course, you can see how unorganized I am. Uh, this did come with a decal sheet. I'll find out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and there's a couple things I might use off of that, like the uh, alignment and accessories, signs, and things like that. But that's the older style golf logo, and I'm going to make this a golf station. But I found these decals online, and they're still in the uh, still in the paper, but I, you can kind of see them through the paper. That's the newer style golf sign, and that's what I'm going to be using. And also I've got some miniature ones here for the pumps and things like that. Um, hope you can see those. So you'll see them when I pull them out. I don't want to pull them out right now because as unorganized as I am, I will lose them. Um, the directions, of course, give you some, some ideas for painting and things like that. But I'm going to use a picture of a golf station that I found online and I'm going to try to replicate it uh, as much as I can. Although I think the bays are, uh, in the picture I have, the bays are on the opposite side, but I don't, that's not going to matter that much. Um, so, a uh, nice little gas station, a real simple, 
quick build, I believe. So let's get started on it. Uh, and I'm going to do this in several parts so I don't bore you to death with a hour or two hour long video. Uh, one of the things you always do when you're building a kit is you start by washing the pieces first and I've already done that. So um, glue and paint sticks better to washed uh, plastic because they use mold release agents when they take them out of the, uh, uh, the plastic molds, the injection molds and they will um, th the paint won't stick too well to them so uh, always wash them and once again I'm gonna actually after I build this because I've been handling it I'm gonna wash it again too so um, the first part is to cut out the four little uh, base sections and always use a hobby knife don't break uh, don't break the parts off the sprue and then you'll always want to clean up your uh, pieces you can see here you can use the back edge of a hobby knife to um, to clean up your uh, plastic pieces, uh, or if there's a, a, just a huge amount of plastic on it, I will I'll use the front edge and try to scrape it a little bit. Another good idea is to have a piece of sandpaper, and this is just um, I think this is 250 grit and just kind of rub the edges. Uh, that'll smooth them up. Uh, you just don't want to overdo it. There we go. Same with this. I'll kind of get, get a big chunk of excess off of the back edge of my hobby knife. And then I'm going to just... Uh, in doing this, if you do it on a flat surface, it'll also kind of square up the plastic a little bit so it fits together better. There we go. And then here are the other two pieces. Right here. So you're, you're as new to this process as I am. I have never built one of these. So uh, there might be things that come along that we can learn together in the building of this. I don't know how, even though this kit looks relatively simple, they all have their, uh, their problems. So you'll notice the, uh, there's a little excess plastic on the edge. I'm going to scrape that off. Like I said, a lot of times the back edge of your, your uh, hobby knife, your X-Acto knife works real well for stuff like that. Just once again, don't be over ambitious with it. Uh, you don't want to unsquare it or take off too much material because it's pretty much impossible to add it back on. Now the um, good uh, good couple passes on the sandpaper we'll square it up nicely and make that edge good and smooth because the goal here is to get away without using putty for anything uh, but even no matter uh, how good you put these together you're going to probably end up using putty somewhere And I recommend, and I'll say this right from the beginning, I know there's different kinds of putties out there and maybe uh, people will get upset at me for this, but I will not use anything except that. Squadron green putty. I don't like the other stuff. I don't like the Tamiya stuff. I don't like you know any other brand. And the reason why is this squadron green putty has toluene in it. And toluene is basically the same thing as uh, model airplane glue. So what happens when you use this putty, it actually melts the plastic somewhat, on a, kind of on a microscopic level. So the putty is not only filling in the seams, but the, uh, but the melting of the plastic and the welding it together uh, helps uh, fill in the seam as well as strengthen it a little bit more. So that's a... That's my tip, is I never use anything but that squadron putty. 
I don't know. I mean, there might be other putty brands that have the toluene in it. I'm just not sure what they are. And knowing government laws, it's probably, I don't know how hard it is to find this. I've had this for a while. Um, and it still works really well. So that's what I use. I have another tube of it as well. Uh, so here's the, uh, this is the front of the service station. I don't know how well you can see it in the picture, but there are some curb edges right there. So that's where you drive up into the bays. All right, so that's it. That's my four pieces. I am going to, I'm gonna glue these together now. So as per the instructions, the, see that just a little bit. Thick piece goes on this side. thin piece and you always want to test fit things together before you glue them you can't tell but this has a little bit of an edge to it that slopes in and so I'm sure the part that slopes in is going to be uh, going to be the top So it doesn't look like, otherwise it looks fairly square on both, the same on both sides. So I am going to fit it right there. And then here's the, the uh, back of the base. Um, same thing, it looks like it slopes, but also I've got these indentions um, that were obviously the bottom, um, you know, the bottom of the mold, so. So I'm going to put that there. So that's that's what it looks like test fit together. So now I just have to make sure that these are square. Uh, I, I know some people have those square clamps, and I wish I had some, but I don't. So what I'm going to do? I bought this not long ago. And I think. I'm going to lay down a paper towel so I don't get glue on my desk. Plus, it's a little bit cleaner surface. My desk is dirty, so I get, uh, get things dirty here. And I'm going to use, for this, um, you know, you can either use the liquid cement or the tube cement. I think for this I'm going to use the liquid cement, or I'm sorry, the tube. Uh, just, just because. And you can use it straight out of the tube like this, or you can use it with a, um, with a um, toothpick. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just put these together. I think I want to use the tube cement because it dries. It doesn't dry quite as fast as the liquid, and I want to get this perfectly square. And I'm gonna use my uh, square here just to make sure that that's the case. And I want to make sure that the edges, the edges here line up as well. So, there we go. I think that's about as close as we're going to get it. I'm going to also uh, do this one now. You just have to be very careful with this tube glue because it, it gets all over the place. There we 
we go. And once again, I can line up. Um, you can see that that is square now. And I'm going to go back just one more time and check this. And it is good. So another thing is you want to make sure that these are level. Not only square, but they're um, one's not higher than the other. And you can feel that. You kind of rub your uh, thumb over it. Or your fingertip. And I, I usually blow on it. That just helps the glue dry a little faster. All right. And now I can, uh, I, I do like, like I said, I use liquid sometimes. It just depends, um, you know, on the, on the pieces I'm gluing together. I, I like the tester stuff. Uh, the Model Master one, and I've seen Vinny use this, is a little bit better because of the uh, needle tip on the Model Master one. It's the same glue on the inside. The dispenser on the Model Master one is just a little bit better. I just was unable to find any recently, so I, uh, I ended up settling for that. Like I said all the, the glue is exactly the same. It's just the... Uh, it's just the dispenser on the Model Master one is not quite as good, or better on the Model Master one, sorry. It's hard to talk and think and work at the same time, at least for me. Alright, so I'm just going to apply a little bit. And notice because of the glue and if it, if it starts getting hard to flow you can just clean off the tip a little bit which is what's happened here there we go uh, notice I'm trying to put it towards the bottom edge of the piece it'll it'll smear around and get up to the top but uh, I just don't want it showing on the, I just don't want it showing when I put it together. So I put it on the bottom half of this edge. Same on the other end. There we go. Yeah, when you're, when you're doing styrene, uh, or polystyrene plastic, you always want to use this uh, model airplane type glue. And definitely don't get the one that says non-toxic. They just don't hold as well. Uh, I can tell this one's toxic because it says danger right on the label. So, And it's only dangerous if you lock yourself up in a room and sniff it. So I would recommend you not doing that. But I don't think anybody out there that's listening to my video is going to be doing something silly like that anyway. All right. So I'm just going to hold this together a few seconds uh, while the glue kind of sets. And I hope you can see it. I hope my head's not too much in the way. All right. So there's the base. And we know the base is square. We uh, we check the squareness. Uh, I can still check it again. I can check it uh, with my. There we go. That's square that way. And that is square that way. How about that? All right. So we got it. We got a square base which is going to work out really nicely. And I'll probably get, get it stuck to the um, <clears throat> paper towel some, but that's okay. 
I can peel that off. All right. I'm just pressing down on this. So that's the one thing to watch. This wants to come up. A little bit. And it's going to happen, but you can get fix as much of the problem as you can while you're putting it together. Um, don't always don't rely on sanding and gluing if you don't have to because uh, you'll have to do enough of that. All right, so there's the base. Pretty easy. <laughs> It's just square. I'm going to have to, uh, of course, do something inside. I'm going to have to make a cement floor, uh, and I'm going to have to make a base for the um, the bays and things like that. So, but we'll uh, we'll get that taken care of. That's going to be no problem. All right. So the next thing out of the two is we've got the walls. Pretty easy. Now, I am not going to glue the base onto the walls, or am I? I can. I'm going to glue the base. I am going to glue the base onto the walls. Um, now, I'm not going to uh, glue the roof on, though. And the reason why is because, of course, I'm going to want to put details in there and lights as well. Um, you know what? I'm not going to glue the. I'm not going to glue the walls onto the base either. And I tell you why. Because once I make these walls, I am going to have to paint this black on the inside. All right everything's going to have to be painted black on the inside and the reason that is is because light bleed you don't want to have to uh you don't want to have to have problems with your lights once you put them in so anything you're going to put lights in paint it black on the inside now of course the black i'm going to have to paint over it again with a with a white or whatever color i'm going to make the walls on the inside uh, but just to just know that that is uh something that needs to be done now this might not be as too too bad because it's such a thick plastic this is this is probably one of the thickest plastic kits i've ever seen and i don't know how long it's been around uh i don't think there's a copyright on this no nope no copyright unless it's on the instructions Oh, 1993. Okay, so there you go. Uh, this one's this one's pretty tough, I have to tell you. I'm uh, trying to cut the um, and if this is where it would be good to have those things that are those little nippers, but I don't have a pair of them, so I'm going to continue to use my hobby knife. And there we go. Now, the, even the instructions tell you to sand the bottom edge of these to square up everything. So that's a, I think that's a good tip. I'm going to take my four walls that I've got and I'm going to sand them. So just the bottom edge because you don't want to get rid of any of the roof detail. Uh, You don't want to see seams, uh, things like that. So sanding the bottom edge of this is good. I said this is maybe 240 grit sandpaper. Okay, since you're not having to see, since this is just trying to square things up, uh, you you don't want to, um, you know, you don't, you're not having to bother about using a fine sandpaper like you would when you're sanding to see details and things like that so so i'm just going to sand the bottom of these a little bit once again don't get overzealous with sanding uh, this one has some a 
big chunks of plastic left on from the sprue. So. So I will get most of that off. It's nice it has a little electric meter actually um, molded onto it. So I don't have to buy an electric meter detail. Might get a gas meter and put outside of it. A little more flatness to that. And one of the things you might want to do is you can see how I'm doing this forward and backwards away from me. And that's so I'm sure I'm keeping the wall level while I'm sanding it. Alright, so that's one wall. I think that one's good. And on this one, see this is ha has its opening here with no support. So I'm going to make sure I push down with my thumb on that section right here while I'm sanding it so it doesn't, doesn't have, have a tendency to bow while I'm sanding it. And sanding it too will give it a nice surface to adhere to, the glue to adhere to as well because it'll be microscopically it'll be a rough surface. And I can side, kind of sight along the edge too and make sure that it's that it's flat. And it's not. So I'm going to tilt it in and make sure I flatten it. There we go. Now I can So this is one of the things you want to watch for is edges that aren't flat and I think they're all kind of like that. I'm tilting it in uh, just to get the bottom edge flat. because it is curved and that's just the way the mold is unfortunately. There's nothing you can do about that except sand it. Because remember this sits on a concrete base and you won't be able to hide edges with grass and dirt and things like that. I'm gonna and when you're sanding like I said you don't want to get too aggressive um, so sand lightly you know hold the hold the piece down uh, on the sandpaper lightly don't don't force it down because what you're trying to do is just square things up you know get things level that's all you're trying to do and that looks much better. I think we can do it to the top just a little bit on this wall just because it has a a plastic flaw in it. There we go. Um, these uh, the side walls I don't want to do it to because they have seams um, and so does this one. So this brick wall is the only one where I can kind of do that to the top. Alright, so there's two more parts to the top. And that is the roof supports. So you want to make sure uh, you get those off. And they're on this screw. There they are. They are just 
basically to support the roof um, so you don't have to be uh, be extra careful with these like you do with most of the pieces all right I'm just gonna I am gonna trim those because these will be totally hidden from view and they go on this front wall now how far down do they go who knows <laughs> I will have to uh, I will have to look at the roof to find out and I will look at that later because I don't I don't know if I pulled it out or not. Is this it or is that nope? There's a piece of scrap plastic I had. Yep. So I will look at that a little bit later. So I tell you what, I'm gonna leave the roof supports off for right now because I'm not sure how far down uh, in here they have to go. So we can come back and glue those on later. Alrighty. So here's the front, here's the sides, and this, uh, this definitely goes like this. And I'm going to use my, uh, my base to help square it and find out exactly where I need to position these. Once again, this will be a good good time to use the um, the glue, uh, the tube glue, because I don't want this drying too quickly. So, um, see what happens um, the glue goes along the front of this to join the front wall but the back wall has the uh, the glue on the side so be careful of that when you're putting it together and I think what I missed doing was sanding the front of these so that they join um, so that they join correctly so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and sand the front so we get a good flat joint on there and because these are uh, these walls are molded curved so I need to get a good good flat sand on that. Now I think I can flat sand it. I had to lean it back at first. <laughs> and it's almost flat now. So if you just lightly sand it. And you can kind of tell when looking on edge if you've missed a sanding spot because it'll have a different sheen to it. And I have a little spot right up here. I don't know if you could see that in the camera. There's a little spot right on this edge that has a different sheen to the rest of the edge. And I think I got it that time. So it's good and flat sanded. All right. Now I'm going to just test fit these parts so I can see. Sorry. Got to get the bottom to the bottom and the top to the top. <laughs> there we go. 
Now I got the right parts together. So you can see if you look here, it's got a pretty good fit. I think I still want to get the bottom edge of this somewhat. <laughs> I don't have a good good flat edge on this bottom of this piece. So this is the part that's time consuming when you're building a model is making sure everything's square and everything's uh, looks right. But this, this is the part that will help you in the end um, make it look like you did a really good job. And it's just, it's just time consuming and it's just something you have to do. Okay, so I'm going to try to match up the edges again. And you can see I got a good fit, a good bottom to that. I'm going to kind of get the bottom edge of that just a little bit, just to give me a. There we go. All right, now let's uh, fit this other one. So this fits like this. And I am going to look at that. And I don't have exactly a flat edge on this end. So I'm going to see what I can do about that. Okay, so that's much better. But I'm going to do this too. All right. So I'm going to first test fit here. I've got a good, I think I've got it well set, situated against the base. Here it's good and flat. And then I've got, uh, I'm going to check, the, check these. And that's good and flat and check this and that's pretty good and flat so now i now i check to see if the walls fit together perfect and they do they're lined up edge to edge here and to make sure that that's happened you see the seams in the wall uh for the uh the tiles uh, I make sure those are lined up and then when I look at those then the edges uh, the edge lines up and once I get this glued together if it isn't perfect I can take the whole structure and flat sand the bottom uh, the most important part right now is that these uh, this lines up and so and it looks good to me so I am going to uh, glue this edge. First of all, let me clean this up with my fingers. Got some plastic shavings. There we go. Oh, that's the one thing about tube glue is it tends to clog up the end. There we go. And you don't want to you don't want to over glue any model. Uh, it doesn't take doesn't take much glue to hold these together. Okay. So you can see the nice little bead I have, and I stop right before the top, and that's because the the, the bead of glue is going to squeeze up. So I don't have to, I won't have to worry about that. All right, let's put these together. Make sure the tile seams are lined up because that's the most important thing right now. All right. Let me get this in the picture. And I want this square, so I'm going to take my uh, little hobby square. Oops, sorry about that. I knocked my camera off. 
Uh, that's the problem with having a cord in your way from the camera. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take my hobby square, and once again, this glue uh, gives me a little time. The tube glue. There we go, nice and square. And if I look at the uh, tile seams, they are lined up fairly well. Just have to make sure as I line them up that I don't get, uh, get it out of square at all. problem with this is the tile seams don't really line up top to bottom real well <laughs> so you just got to kind of take an average you can see that this one's perfectly on and then this one's just a little bit off and there's really nothing you can do about that except uh, you know maybe get one of them to line up and then average out the rest so that's what I'm doing or if you can get as many as you can get lined up. There we go. Nice and square. I'm going to put this one on now. And remember this one doesn't have as much surface area. So what we want to do is, hold on, let me sand that just a little bit. What we want to do on this one is stop the glue right before the top edge and stop it right before the bottom edge and before the top edge. So you got to be a little more careful on this one with the glue. And you got to be careful once again with tube glue because if you push too hard it'll start coming out. So this is where you may want to use a toothpick with something like this. Once again, don't need to use a lot of this. If you use too much, it'll soften the plastic and it'll never harden up. Uh, there we go. So you want to make sure that these edges uh, meet up perfectly too. Uh, so you gotta, that's one thing you gotta look at. You always, when you're building buildings, you gotta make sure everything's uh, square with each step and not only square but plumb. There we go. Plus you have to worry about lateral. Um, there we go. I think that looks good. Got to be careful not to glue your square to your structure. All right. One more wall, the back wall. And if everything's correct, that should fit in there. And it do. <laughs> I'm glad it does. I would be, uh, I would not be happy if it didn't fit. Uh, I'm going to square these up a little bit. These aren't exactly flat and they need to be. Okay. just have to do that a little bit more.
There we go. All right. So let's get this glued in. Remember, don't go all the way to the top because the glue will start moving out once you tighten everything up. I'm not so much worried about the bottom. Okay. Sure, you got to be careful. As you can see, I made a little bit of a mess. It's good to have a toothpick handy so I can kind of scrape this off. I got some glue on the top. Um, I think I got most of it off though. All right, so we want to make sure that this wall is flush, not only vertically, but laterally. And unfortunately, this mold is not the best because it was molded kind of uh, bowed. <laughs> uh, so on one side I've got a uh, I got a problem. Do I make it flush up at the top or at the bottom? And I think I'm going to just split the difference. But this side this side seems to be okay. So there we go. All right. So we've got the base done. And we've got the four walls glued together. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to sit the four walls on the base just to kind of test the squareness with the base. And it actually looks pretty good. It looks like I've got about the same amount of, uh, of distance. Uh, from uh, the wall to the edge and the wall to the edge and the same on this side. Um, looks like that. So that looks good. I think I'll uh, think what I'll do is now I will clamp it. I've got these little clamps here. Now I have never I have never used these before. So I don't think I'm going to be able to use them here either because it's too uh, too wide. Oh well, <laughs> I just have to live with it. Just have to hold it together a little bit. And do it like that. Yeah, I think this is going to be a nice little service station. I really, uh, and I really appreciate everybody joining in to watch the build. Uh, like I said, after I finish this, I'm going to be doing more builds with more kits because I have about 10 kits I need to put together. Um, while I am waiting on my other house to sell, which sh should not be too much longer. <laughs> uh, once it sells, then I'm going to have my train room built in the backyard. So, uh, by the beginning of summer, Lord willing, I will be working on my new layout. Until then, it's building buildings, getting ready for that new layout. So, uh, which is something that's got to be done too. So, if I if I had the layout started, I would still have to be building buildings. So, all right, everybody, uh, that's it for this build. I am going to leave you with um, with a. Uh, little bit of running here I have my I have my test uh, bench set up and 
I hope it works. Ah. I've got to I've got my consist set up here and I'll have to back up a little bit. I hope you can see it. That's my little test bench. I have been working on uh, building the, uh, the grain elevator over here and I'm just about done with it. As you can see, uh, there's, my, there's my grain elevator. Uh, hope you like that. But there's my, there's my little consist. That's it. Y'all have a good evening. This is Flying Crow signing off.